Hey, what's up everyone? As if I'm not a glutton enough for punishment, uh, I've created another project. <laughs> so I'm uh, in the process of revamping my home theater a bit, uh, and I've been searching all different types of subwoofers. I've got a, a JTR sub that's about yay high, it's about yay deep, uh, and yay wide. So it's uh, massive. And so I have a significant overload of a base in one corner of the room. And I, I knew I would, uh, but I wanted to buy the sub and I've had it for what, two years now, two and a half years. And uh, I think it's time to, to change it up a bit. And so I've been searching all different subwoofer options, stuff from JTR, stuff from Seton, uh, SVS, PSB, uh, Velodyne, all different types of sub options. And I kept coming up with you know, six, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars worth of options, and uh, and now I have a, a JL Fathom F113 that I put in the back of the room to help offset some of the sound, uh, and then I have the uh, the you know the the big JTR 4000 ULF in the front with dual dual 18s, big giant uh, woofer. So I have that in the front left, and so they offset a little, but of course it's still, you know, it's still overweight. And so what I'd like to do is do 18s in each corner, uh, or in each, you know, near each corner of the room. Uh, and so what I'm going to try to do here is build a subwoofer box, and we'll see how it goes. See how it sounds, see if I can do it reasonably well uh, doing this DIY kit. I'm going to show you everything that comes with it, and uh, we'll, you know, see how, see how it goes. And then if I... Uh, I, I almost did what I normally do, which is buy them all and hope it works. Instead, I bought one, do the sensible thing. Uh, I'd buy one and then see if it works. Uh, and so we're, you know, we're talking about yeah, 800 bucks or so uh, for 1,000 watt amp, 18 inch woofer, and then uh, um, you know, I had to buy some other stuff, but the uh, box included, and I'll show you all that stuff here. So we're gonna work through this process putting it together and see how it goes. See if I can do it and make it look uh, reasonably decent. All right, so here's what I've got for the project. I don't know where I should start. Uh, so I've got some, uh, whatever this fill is. They used to, they used to use polyfill, but uh, whatever they, uh, whatever they call it, Acousta, Acousta something or other. All right, so let's walk through all the different components I have. So I have uh, five pounds of Acousta stuff. All these parts are from Parts Express. Uh, with the exception of a few things, which I'll mention. Uh, this is a 3 8 inch uh, in diameter, or I guess in width, not diameter. 3 8 in width. Uh, this would be, I guess, weather stripping for the, uh, for the surround the subwoofer. Uh, I did buy a Milwaukee Fuel jigsaw because I didn't have a jigsaw. I'll have to go get a wood blade. Uh, we won't be cutting here today anyway. This video will span across multiple days as the glue dries. The uh, SPA. 1000 Dayton Audio uh, amplifier. I wanted to get the 1200, which has a uh, auto, which has DSP and then auto leveling and I guess uh, room uh, equalization, but they don't have any, so I'm going to try this one out. I got a Dayton, Dayton Audio speaker spike set, so those will be spikes for the feet because I have carpeting in the room. I bought these from Amazon, bought some brushes for spreading the glue. Also bought some Tidal Bond from Amazon. Uh, Duratex is from Parts Express. I probably need to get a bigger roller. I forgot to order that. Uh, so well, that'll be uh, what we'll do final on the end. The uh, Dayton Audio Ultimax 18 inch woofer. Pretty stout, dual voice coil, two ohm. We'll have to wire that in series. Uh, I bought these from Parts Express just for simplicity, uh, but some 36 inch bar clamps. And then we have the box. And it's a, uh, I guess they CNC this precision cut. So I'm cheating a bit. I'm not building my own subwoofer for real. I'm more assembling it, uh, but it'd be kind of fun. So I'm gonna work through this project here today, get it started and then build it over the next couple of days because you have steps where things have to dry. All right, so let's get rolling here. I notice I've got my uh, backwards uh, cool guy, cool dad hat on in order to, uh, to signify how cool I am for building my own subwoofer. So let's just test fit this, make sure this fits. Again, this is all pre-cut CNC. I didn't do any of this stuff. So I don't even know that I'd call this building my own subwoofer, but 
should be able to, there we go. So this should all square itself up nicely. Okay, cool. So I guess this is step one. This is what we'll end up doing today. And then we'll have to wait for this all to dry. And then uh, I'll have to square this part up here. Uh, and then once that's all done, then you know, we'll come back tomorrow and work on step two and three. Uh, I've, I've checked all the parts before going on the video uh, to make sure I have all the right ones. I, have, I guess we could test fit it if we wanted to. Uh, I don't think it's necessary. This, I have all the parts that I needed. I've watched the video about, uh, I think, three times now. Okay, so let's do this. I'm gonna go get some paper towels so that I have those for when I get glue everywhere. So I'll tell you right now, for those of you, you're probably already bored. For those of you who are not Obsessed Garage followers, uh, this, uh, this is my normal long format where I fill in all kinds of stuff in between. So if you're not into that, you may want to go watch the Parts Express video, which has all of the, uh, all of the pertinent information in a much more digestible fashion than me fumbling through this process. Just giving you a heads up now. Save you from having to make a nasty comment about how I'm the worst human in the world and I should shut up. So, For those of you home theater people that aren't into garages and haven't watched a lot of my stuff. Okay, I'm gonna start with a smaller amount. I tend to overdo things so, so now I should be able to take this Put it in place. So for those of you who do watch my videos, good news. I just bought a Sony, actually bought two A7S's and a gimbal. So I'm gonna get a lot better angles for you people who watch this stuff in the not too distant future. Should have it in a few days. Okay, I want to make sure I get any excess out of here to keep this edge clean because we're going to have to glue this later. So I'm going to err on the side of using less glue than more glue. Now we're going to put some glue here. So I'll do a little bit more, put two little runs. And there has to be some up here too. So we'll brush that on there mostly. I know I shouldn't say this, but this seems like it's gonna be pretty easy. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Okay, looks like we have an appropriate amount of glue everywhere. So now we take this piece, put it in place. This should bring everything relatively into square. And then I didn't bring my uh, didn't bring my square with me, so we're gonna have to use a have to use a level. I think it's probably smart to tuck some glue in here. Alright, so I bought a bunch of these clamps. And so I watched the video. We're supposed to clamp this down. So I think I'll set the clamp up and then square it. We'll set that there. Set this here. We'll put a little more glue where it belongs. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. I don't remember seeing this part in the video, but I'm doing it anyway. Shoot, I'm gonna cheat this system here. This sucker isn't going anywhere. I'm not waiting for squat. It says to wait another day, but I don't think we have to. So I'm gonna do this section. Here, I'm not gonna wait. Just take this piece, put it right here. So what we do is line it up. This is where having a much shorter clamp would make more sense, but this is what I got. And we'll hold everything nice and tightly in place. All right, so here's where I'm at. And I'm working through, I'm gonna fill in those gaps with some extra glue. This is all nice and square. 
I'm going to hustle through getting the four sides on so I can get clamps all over it. Keep everything nice and tight. All right, rolling through this. I'm going to find out if this works. You definitely don't want to buy all 36 inch long clamps. So I think I hit up this spot, bring it up here, get it all up in here. Got to do the two edges. Got too much on there. Glue here. And that first. Now, I think I can put this in. I think I'll put one up top first, and then one all the way across. Maybe this is why you're not supposed to rush it. Let's see. We'll see if we can get this to work. It kind of squeezes everything together nicely. I'm not doing too badly. I thought for sure I'd have this screwed up by now. It's like I kind of, it's a good thing this is idiot proof. So I think you could very realistically do this much without waiting for stuff to dry. I'm gonna clean up some of those edges with a brush here. Here's the start of the box. Looks pretty stout. I've got it pretty darn square. All the edges look really sharp and crisp, unlike other boxes I've done in my younger years. Got a little bit of a mess inside, but that's okay. So tomorrow, we'll put the top on. I guess it will be the front where the actual woofer goes. All right, it's been uh, 24 hours or so. I guess not quite that long. 15 hours. And so now I'm gonna take all my braces off. And now I have to put the, I cheated, I didn't show you this, but I put the, the top plate on here, the baffle. So now I'm gonna, I'm going to put the front trim piece. I'm gonna go, it's, I guess it's the secondary part of the baffle on here. So I think what I'll do, yeah, I'll just, I'll just paint this. Before I do that, I'll get some glue in there, we'll see. So hopefully this box doesn't fall apart because I've uh, taken some shortcuts on, you know, I didn't let the braces dry overnight. I just started putting it together. I think we'll be fine. Top piece. Get this lined up as perfectly as possible. There's one. Yet. Almost like I know what I'm doing. Not too bad for my first go. I thought for sure I'd have it with some wonky edges, but I think I did all right. Okay. So now it's been about, I don't know, six hours or so since I put this on. I'm just going to roll with it. Hope it doesn't fall apart. And we'll put this back. This is pretty solid. That's for sure. They don't, they don't make a template for this. So, I got the amp. I'm gonna have to just measure it. I guess if I measure, measure, I don't know. Okay, so 10 is the center this way. Oh, my math, my math is wrong, 23. <laughs> it's 11 and a half, not 12 and a half, yeah. No, am I right? Just, just measurement. <laughs> I want it to be on. So if I start at one, I'm going to go to seven and 13 sixteenths. Yep. See, I'm good. Now, here we go. There's no going back. First of all, do I have the right side? There's no hole in your side, right? The hole is pointing down. Yeah, yeah. You're good. <laughs> Okay. There's our port hole. <laughs> no ports. I like sealed. Ah. 
Nice. Nice. Now I got it stuck in there though. All right, so let's see how this goes. Looks thick. So I think the prudent thing to do is to lay it on with the brush and then come back and level it with the roller. And I didn't get the big roller, so I hope that, I hope this works. Hope I can make it look decent. This is going in my really fancy home theater. I think I'm probably gonna need to put it on thicker than this. But yeah, good news is I, I definitely have enough. I just don't, I don't know how many layers, how many coats I've gotta put on. So let's do this. Yeah, I think this is gonna work. I think there's a bit of a, you know, this adds some texture to it so you don't see imperfections as much. At least that's what I'm wagering. Yeah, I think this is gonna work great. I was afraid with it being black that we would end up seeing the roller marks. Man, that looks really good. This is like totally pro. And this is water-based, so I can just go wash this out. This is the theme of this thing. I'm going much faster than recommended. But that's good because I gotta build three more of these things. I think I'd be best stopping like here. Because I don't want to get it on there. Alright, so I think you guys get the idea with the whole painting on thing here. I'm just taking Hitting it with the brush first and then slopping some extra on here to be able to roll it around. And seems like the finish on this is going to come out pretty darn nicely. Okay, so box is all basically two to three coats depending on the area. Uh, one thing you definitely want to do is you want to get a you want to get a bigger version of this because I can see some of the marks. This is the one we'll put behind the couch, uh, well, you know, assuming that I'm gonna do more of these. So I need to do inch and a half by inch and a half. So that's gonna be our spot, inch and a half by inch and a half. I'm gonna drill a small pilot hole. I think we're supposed to go all the way through. And I'm gonna drill a 5 16 sized hole. Does that not look right? Inch and a half. Because it's not right, you idiot. It's an inch and a quarter. Shoot. We'll do the same thing on all of them then. Let me take this. And I need an Allen. We'll do that and then put our spike in place. Okay, feet are on. Now I can flip it up and redo the front. Or finish the front, I should say. I wonder if I even need to do any more. I think we're good. I'd already put two coats on it. But I wondered if I needed to do a third. I think we're safe. Yeah. Time to mount. I wonder if I should go put it in the vise and put the plastic jaws on there. Because it's a little bent here. Can I get it back out now? Push. So I'm going to go put some plastic jaws on the vise and then bend it back. So I'm going to drill a little pilot holes. Put a bunch of screws in here. All right, let's see how this goes. I should have gotten some fancy cap head screws or something, but I'm gonna use drywall screws. Black drywall screws will do it. There's 
There's our amp. Nice. So I'm going to vacuum this a little more, vacuum it out, put my Acousta stuff. I think the smarter thing to do with the subwoofer, let's, let's fill it first and then don't worry about the sub. So this is five pounds. This is like the worst video I've ever made. You know, I'm having to concentrate because it's something I've never done before. And there's lots of things that I've never done before, but for some reason this one's kind of making me think. I think because I know it's going in my home theater, I don't want it to be janky. I guess it's a little late for that since I'm home making it anyway. Crap, I can't put the sub in. I need to go get some speaker wire. Dang it. I can probably cut a little piece off. I need a little jumper, a little loop to, because the subwoofer is a dual voice coil. So I think we're not supposed to like jam it next to the amp so it can, doesn't get too hot. Shoot, this is five pounds. I thought I would have a bunch of extra, but I guess that's how we do it. So here's the sub. And what we need to do is I need to wire it in series. So if I two ohm voice coil, series would be additive, right? Man, it's been a long time since my electrical engineering days. So yeah, positive to positive would give me a four ohm. Is that right? I think so. I better go better go brush up. That degree is a long time ago. And I haven't messed with uh, woofers at all either. Okay, now I need to cut these ends off. And I was wrong, as usual. Not positive to positive. I had to go draw it on a piece of paper. I go positive to negative. And so I went and cut some extra wire I had. So we're gonna take our subwoofer. And just do a jumper from here. Problem is, I don't think I'm gonna be able to fit. This is, this is a 10, uh, what is this stuff, 10 gauge I think? No, not 10 gauge, 12 gauge. Negative, not positive. Okay, I've got to paint this thing here. Figures. I think I got a little paint left over. I'm just gonna paint the whole freaking lip. Next one I build is gonna be a darn breeze. All right, I'm gonna wash this. Let that dry. I think a single coat's gonna be fine. We could just barely see it. Idiot. Only one way to learn that is to screw it up. All right, day four. I was a little bit smarter this time around. Shoot. In that, I lowered the lift. What I want to do first is put a strip of weather stripping around the edge here because I want to make sure it's tight. So this is three eighths. I probably should have gotten half inch. We wouldn't be on day four if I had painted this portion here. Now I didn't do texture here. I wanted to make sure I got a good seal. So I'm thinking for my home theater, what I might do this will be in the rear. So I'm gonna make another one identical to this. And then the fronts I may do passively. So I may do the fronts without an amp and then put an amp in my cabinet. We'll see. I just got my new OLED. I got a 77 inch. I was gonna do a projector, but I got the 77 inch LG C OLED. I'll have to have it ISF calibrated. So I'll be taking the 65 out of there. Kind of set it sideways here. I'm going to do this without messing anything up. Okay. That'll work. So I shortened this 
positive jumper, positive to negative jumper, so that hopefully it's not smacking around inside of here. Now, let's take this. <clears throat> Make the holes somewhat symmetrical. The problem with putting that stripping in there, it's hard to get this lined up. Now, make some holes. Being very careful not to damage, damage the rubber. Step. Screws in, and then we'll see if this thing works. So because I'm going to have, I've talked about this, because I'm going to have four of these, I didn't find the need to port them. I liked, I've always liked the sound of sealed enclosures better anyway in car audio. So I think you may consider if you're going to do one of these, you may get a little more output from a, or at least perceived output from a, output from a ported enclosure. We're going to go just this way. All right. There's our sub. Let's go put it in position, fire it up, see if it works. Okay, let's hook this thing up. So, in HQ here, I've got pretty simple, I guess, I guess it'd be a little less simple setup. Uh, this is a uh, Outlaw Audio wireless subwoofer device. And so let's plug it in. Make sure power switches off. Wow, they really provide a pretty stout power cord. And then I should probably plug this directly into the wall, but I've got a power strip back here on the clips. All right, this is where something goes bad. I'm an idiot. What kind of electrical engineer am I? I wired it wrong. I knew, I knew I should have taken the time to sit down and draw it out. I got, got, too, got too excited, too hasty. You guys are watching me wire it and yelling. But I'm gonna leave this in because I'm not scared. I'm not scared of you geniuses that never screw anything up. Okay, so I need to jump. In order to make this a four ohm load, I need to wire it in series. So, jump from positive to negative. Idiot, I'm so, so angry at myself. And then, what I, where I messed up is I need to put the other positive. So I never completed the circuit on there. And then the other positive over here. There we go. Now we have a four ohm load. Ay, 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 Maddie. Now it should work. Makes it more satisfying when you have to fix stupid. And we're in. All right, test number two. All right, I'm still on day four, so that's the good news. Bad news is, notice the amplifier is taken apart on the bench. I was ready to start smashing stuff. I got my box kind of jacked up now, but this Molex connection here, this Molex, the input board was not connected, hence me not having any input. 
this board here, this Molex was not connected. I knew it wasn't an idiot. First I wired it wrong and then I checked the wiring about six times more. But I wasn't sure which one of these needed to come out so I ended up taking apart too much. I've already gotten shocked once. The capacitors still have some serious juice. So now I'm going to put all these screws back in that I took out and shouldn't have. So I guess in shipping this thing just kind of came apart inside. It's making it a real DIY project here. So here I thought, you know, my wiring was just screwed up and I was like, oh, okay, that, that was an easy fix. I had to pull the whole darn amplifier out and start over. Although, probably would have been smart to pen bench test it <laughs> before putting it all back together again. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, first time I had it in, it was beautiful. Now it's a little janky. Fingers crossed. Oh no. What the heck? <laughs> what the heck, man? Oh, we should have bench tested it. Oh, wait a second. I'm not in the sub output. We're in business, Bryce. We did it. <laughs> That's some bass, bro. Subwoofer project is done. I'm not playing any music, so I don't want to copyright strike on this video, but let's see what happens here. Let's give it a little juice. <laughs> I did four of these suckers in the house. So subwoofer project done next time make sure to check the amplifier make sure to wire the subwoofer correctly i'm going to touch up the cabinet a little bit from where i messed it up from moving it around so much uh yeah the thing is uh thing's pretty legit not too bad for a homemade sub Anyway, project done. Uh, make sure to check out, I'll have uh, some home theater follow-up series uh, as I build the rest of these subs. I got a new 77-inch uh, OLED that I'm gonna be putting and installing, changing the acoustic treatments around a little bit. So uh, make sure to go check out those videos. It'll be coming out in the next week or so. So anyway, thanks for watching this DIY project. Sorry to you home theater aficionados as I fumble through this. I should video the second one uh, so that I look like I know what I'm doing. But I find that uh, most people are gonna have the same, uh, or some people are gonna have the same issues that I'm gonna have. So it's better to show you the process. So thanks for watching. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. All right, let's see what it sounds like. force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor, the floor, foot to the floor.